What's going on guys, Carmine here, and welcome to another one of my theory videos, and yes, you heard correctly, theory video. Now normally I don't exactly do one of these because there are a lot of Game of Thrones related theories out there that I think are bullshit and really aren't that thought provoking enough to get me excited about them, but this is one of the ones I've enjoyed for quite some time. The theory is that Gendry, the apprentice blacksmith we first meet in Season 1, is actually the son of Cersei Lannister and Robert Baratheon. Now, I was never a big fan of this theory when I first heard about it, nor was I a big believer in it when the people in the comments brought up that Gendry could be her child, but once you start to piece the clues together and get to know Cersei and her character a bit more, then it starts to make a little sense. Also, towards the end, I will be going through my thoughts on where Gendry is and what his role might be in Season 7, so keep in mind that towards the end, I will have some spoilers, but I will alert you in time, so don't worry. Okay, so one thing I really loved about Season 1 is that the first half is a murder mystery with Ned Stark trying to piece in the clues while also deciding who he can and cannot trust. When it comes to this type of series, you don't exactly see the mystery genre creep in like that, and it really got me hooked. Who killed this man? Who can I trust? And what was he killed for? It's exciting, and the first half of Season 1 is always entertaining. When Ned Stark arrives in King's Landing, we meet all the players and see the situation firsthand as to what's been going on, and, well some shady shit has been going on. John Aaron, the previous Hand of the King, and the father figure to Ned Stark was murdered and his dying words spark a really interesting mystery. The seed is strong. We now know that he meant that black hair is dominant in the Baratheon family tree no matter who it is they have children with. All of King Robert's children with other women have black hair even if the mothers don't have black hair and his children with Cersei Lannister have blonde hair. All of them. The mystery is solved that one of his children remain. Gendry. Could Gendry be the long-lost son Cersei had with Robert back when she could tolerate him? Well, to answer this, we need to go back a little. In Season 1, during King Robert's visit to Winterfell, Ned Stark's son Bran falls from a tower. While in a coma, Cersei tries to console the boy's mother, Catelyn, and tells the story about how she lost her firstborn. I lost my first boy. Little black-haired beauty. He was a fighter, too. Tried to beat the fever that took him. So basically, Cersei had a child who died of a fever shortly after being born. In that same conversation, she would later say how the baby looked like him. And I'm going to go and assume she's talking about Robert. So black hair and resemble Robert a little? Hmm. Could Cersei be lying here, trying to manipulate Kathleen into believing that she had nothing to do with Bran's fall? It's possible because she is a great actress when it comes to faking things. Or maybe Cersei is feeling a bit of guilt and wanted to comfort Kathleen, and maybe herself, with her own experience. Also, keep in mind one thing. In this very same conversation with Kathleen, Cersei tells her that they came to take the body away and that she never visited the crypts. She never went to visit her son's grave. Keep that in mind. So how does this all connect to Gendry? Well, before we get there, I want you to go back and watch that scene in episode 2 again. I find it curious that right after this conversation, the very next scene is a blacksmith, with black hair of course, making Arya's needle. Coincidence? Well, maybe, but the showrunners have done things like this before especially when alluding to the fact that Jon Snow is the son of Rhaegar and Lyanna. We've seen them do this type of scene changing with Jon, so it wouldn't be out of the ordinary to see it being done with Gendry. So in one scene, Cersei talks to Catelyn about her black-haired beauty, and depending on who you ask, the actor who plays Gendry is good-looking, so you have that, but Cersei talks about her baby with black hair, and it looked like Robert. The next scene cuts to a blacksmith with black hair, and then later on, when we meet Gendry, who is also a blacksmith with black hair, Ned notices how he resembles a young Robert. Could this be the show trying to give us a nice little connection here? Or is it just coincidence? And before you make up your mind, let me take this a little farther. In Season 2, when Arya and Gendry are talking, Arya asks about his mom. Gendry replies that she worked in a tavern and died when he was little. Okay, not really out of the ordinary, but why would Robert go out of his way to sleep with some random tavern wench when he can have one of the many whores in King's Landing? Or maybe this tavern wench was Cersei. See, this is where it starts to get into book territory, but I'm going to go ahead and assume this happened in the show as well. And no, this isn't a spoiler because it's so minor that I'm just going to go ahead and save you the trouble. In the fourth book, when Jaime is standing vigil over Tywin's dead body, Cersei sneaks in dressed as a tavern wench. In fact, Jaime makes a note of it when she comes in, and she asks him if he remembers when they were younger how she would sneak out in a disguise like that and get with him in one of the taverns in King's Landing. Not only that, but Gendry tells Ned his mother had yellow hair, and a couple episodes later in Season 1, Robert yells at Ned to make peace with those yellowed-haired shits. See where I'm going with this? So if Gendry really is her son, then why is he working as a blacksmith apprentice when we first see him? Why is he not Robert's legitimate heir? Why would Cersei give this child up? 
Well, the theory is, is that Cersei hated Robert so much she couldn't bear the thought of having his kids. In the books, she hints to Ned that she had abortions to avoid giving Robert any children. And yes, abortions do exist in Game of Thrones. It comes in the form of a tea that you can drink and it'll usually prevent or abort a pregnancy. In the books, Cersei went all out to prevent any children from being born due to her hatred for Robert, but maybe in the show things are different. In the scene between Cersei and Ned in the garden, she admits that she really did like him, but all he could think of was Ned's sister. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume that Cersei tried to make things work with Robert even after their first night together. She tried to make it work, but Robert sucks at being a loving husband, and she realized this far too late into her pregnancy. She realized that she could never really love this child, but due to her motherly instincts, she could never hurt it either, nor allow anybody else to do so. When she gives birth, she devises a plan to switch out the baby with another one who had just died. To do this, she needed not just Jamie but Grand Maester Pycelle on her side. Keep in mind that Grand Maester Pycelle is supposed to serve the king first, but in a Season 3 deleted scene, we learn that he had always served House Lannister, despite who was in charge. Pycelle also admits this in Season 2 when Tyrion confronts him for being a spy for Cersei. So Jaime does the horrible deed of finding a child who has already died of sickness, and Pycelle does the job of convincing King Robert that the baby died. Perfect. Oh, and by the way, this was also done by Varys during Robert's Rebellion in the books, but I won't get into that because it is book spoilers. So keep in mind that even in the books, characters have swapped out babies before, so it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for any character in the show to do this as well. So Cersei realizes she can never love this child and doesn't want to kill it, so she has Jaime and Pycelle switch out the child and convince Robert that their firstborn had died. She leaves the task of relocating the child to Jaime. Jaime can't exactly leave King's Landing without anybody noticing he's gone, so he makes sure the kid has someone who will take care of him. This is also why she never visited the crypts, because she knew the child that died was never hers in the first place. Now, we don't know much about Gendry's life from the time he was born up until he got his job as a blacksmith with Tobo Mod, and here is where John Arryn comes into the mix. Cersei likely had this child within Robert's first year of being king, and Robert was king for more than a decade, and that means John Arryn was Robert's hand for more than a decade, and he spent a lot of time observing and interacting with Cersei. And John isn't a stupid man. He correctly assumed Cersei's three children weren't Robert's, and he went into investigating this, looking up the children and making sure Robert's bastards were all looked after or at least healthy. We're led to believe that John Arryn came looking for the kids to confirm they all had black hair, but that wasn't his only goal. What if John Arryn planned to reveal the truth about Cersei's cheating and wanted to make sure some of Robert's bastards were alive and well to be legitimate heirs? Ultimately, even if John Arryn accused Cersei of cheating, he would have to convince Robert of this. Multiple bastards with different mothers, some of which have yellow hair as well, would be presented as evidence. It's not enough to have just one person, Gendry, but it would pay off to show Robert the more than 10 bastards who share his family traits, and this would explain why he tracked them all down. Not only that, but it also makes sense that Gendry is Cersei's son, because, as we all know, all of Cersei's plans backfire on her tremendously. Think about that for a minute here. All of Cersei's plans backfired on her one way or another. She planned for Joffrey to be king, so she had Robert get drunk out of his mind until he eventually died in an accident. She thought she could control Joffrey, but he turned out to be an insane monster. She thought she could use the Sparrows to remove the Tyrells, but they ended up turning on her. You see, all her plans eventually backfire, and it would make a lot of sense that this one would as well. Even though Jon Arryn never had a chance to reveal this to anybody, it'll ultimately come back to her, just like everything else. Peter Baelish knew of Jon Arryn's plans, this is why he led Ned around in Season 1, but he couldn't just let Ned use his trump card against Cersei just yet. You see, Gendry, in my opinion, is Peter Baelish's trump card. In Season 5, we see that Peter tells Elena about a young man. We're led to believe that this young man is Lancel, but why would Lancel all of a sudden confess to the High Sparrow his incest with Cersei just because Peter told Elena? See, it would make more sense that Lancel, when we meet him again in Season 5, has already confessed to the High Sparrow everything before even arriving in King's Landing, because when we do see Lancel again, he is already a devout follower. He wouldn't be such a believer if he kept something that big from the High Sparrow until Elena revealed it. No, no, no. Peter's gift was Gendry. Gendry is the key into removing Cersei from power, because he is the last Baratheon. Someone Marjorie could marry. Elena wouldn't buy Peter's bullshit unless he could back it up, and I believe he has and will. But Gendry has been missing since Season 3. Well, maybe he hasn't been rowing his boat across the ocean after all. When we last saw him, he was rowing his boat from the Dragonstone to King's Landing, and it's not too far off. This was at the end of Season 3. In the beginning of Season 4 when Joffrey dies, Sansa is swept away to a ship waiting nearby in King's Landing, and it happens to be Peter Baelish. 
What if when Gendry left Dragonstone at the end of Season 3, he happened to come across Peter's boat, and Peter has been hiding Gendry all this time and is planning to use his identity to control the Seven Kingdoms? As always, whenever you proclaim your right to the Iron Throne, you better back that up with some allies and an army. Well... Peter has the Knights of the Vale and the whole of the North as his allies. Not only that, but if he's partnered up with Lena, he has the Tyrells too. Gendry could be Cersei's last mistake in a long line of many. Now that we're at the end of the video, here is where the spoilers come, but I want you to continue on with me despite that, and no, I won't go into many heavy spoilers. Just one picture. If I still have you with me, then let me show you this. It looks like Gendry's back, and maybe, just maybe, Gendry will be the one that sits on the Iron Throne. Unless Danny sits on it, which I don't think she will, but that's a video for another time. Oh, and for those of you wondering about the Maggie the Frog prophecy, well, that also makes sense considering Cersei gave the child away, and she doesn't consider the child hers. So in a crazy prophecy loophole type of situation, Maggie never mentions Gendry because Cersei didn't want him, nor considered him her child. In Cersei's mind, her only children are the ones she had with Jaime, the ones with golden crowns and shrouds. So Maggie decides to only tell her about her children, and nothing else. Makes sense to me. So to recap, Gendry was Cersei's first child with Robert. In the books, she hated him and aborted all his children, but because the show is an alternate timeline, then I'm assuming that even after realizing how terrible of a husband Robert is, she tries to make it work. She has a child with him, but too far into the pregnancy, she realizes Robert will never change and doesn't want to have his children. She devises a plan to give the baby away and make Robert believe he died. Jamie switches the boy and Pycelle convinces the king. Gendry grows up in King's Landing, and John Aaron begins investigating all of Robert's bastards in the hopes that he can tell Robert the truth. Peter has John Aaron poisoned and betrays Ned to protect his trump card until he can use Gendry himself to control the Seven Kingdoms and undermine Cersei's rule. Could all of this be possible? Maybe. We'll just have to wait to find out. Thanks for watching. As always, if you enjoy the video, then be sure to leave a like, comment below, and tell me your thoughts on the whole Gendry theory, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. For those of you already subscribed, be sure to hit that little bell there so you can be alerted every time I upload a video, or just follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.